dragon. Let's get some music going. Let's rock some dragon drawing jobs. Hi guys, Gio Benedetti here. Happy to be drawing dragons with everybody. What's going down? Oh, what is that? Is that a floating cup of coffee coming my way? That'd be super cool if coffee just like floated by and fell in your mouth whenever you needed it. That's not the way the real world works, folks. It's not the way it works. Hey, what were we talking about? Dragon drawing? Cool, let's draw a dragon. A dragon lurking in the shadows. Here, come this way, let's draw. I think if you go that way, then it ends up going to my Facebook cam. No, Facebook, FaceTime cam. I don't know, my mouth, my mouth doesn't work anymore. All right, so we voted, we did a, a, a random dragon generator selection and we had three options. I don't remember what all the options were, but one of the options was a dragon lurking in the shadows. So that's what we're gonna draw today, everybody. Let's draw a dragon. The music didn't come through. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. Technology is messed up. I got a sharp pencil. I got a piece of paper. I got all sorts of erasers over here. Here's an eraser. Here's a pencil pointed down to an eraser. That's all you need. Maybe we'll do some coloring. It's going to be a lot of shading today. Let's go to drawing cam and draw a dragon looking in the shadows. All right, guys, guys and gals. Here's my paper. I'm gonna put a, a finger on each corner, okay? I got a finger over here on this corner. Got a finger down here on this corner. I'm gonna draw a, a smaller rectangle inside of my paper. I do this sometimes. Sometimes using the edge of the page can be difficult. Sometimes I, I can't really frame how big I want things to be. Sometimes I draw a frame onto the paper that I want my picture to be. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm coming in a little bit on each side, maybe an inch on each side. And I'm just making a new frame. This is gonna be the new extreme edge of my drawing. Oh, how about our glare today, huh? That is something else. That is something pretty special. It's almost blown me right out of the water here. What if we do that? Now it's just dark and gloomy. What if I do this? Better. Okay, so we'll do that. So this is what I'm gonna start in. And I'm gonna draw, not just a dragon lurking in the shadows, but I'm gonna draw somebody on an adventure in a dungeon about well, if there's a dragon lurking in the shadows, it's gotta be lurking in the shadows for a reason, right? Okay, this is gonna be the ground. This is gonna be the ground that my character is gonna be walking on. Are you guys ready to do a ton of erasing today? I'm gonna make you do something kind of fancy today. I hope, hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, Stella's gonna draw with us because it's better than doing school work. Ain't that, ain't that right? All right, so here she is. I'm gonna get Stella set up here. See, this is me, thumbs up. And, and she has to draw in the dark because everything in here is super dark. You got a pencil and an eraser? Okay, here we go. You guys got the ground? This is the ground that our, our hapless person is gonna be walking on towards a dragon lurking in the shadows. I'm gonna go right about halfway I'm gonna have a lot of planning lines today, okay? This is the horizon line. And right here, this dot that I'm gonna put in the center of my page in the center of my horizon is, sorry, Ramona, why I can't move the camera. The camera is attached to this little document scanner. Here, you wanna see my face coming in? Ah! That's the only way that I can do the drawing. <laughs> I promise to never do that again. That was terrifying. <laughs> so, so here's our vanishing point. 
we are going to do what's called one point perspective. This is where everything is disappearing to the same point. Now, if you guys need a ruler or have a ruler and like using rulers, that's awesome. I have rulers. I have a ruler right here. I am not going to use a ruler, but I'm going to show you how to do one. Here is the ground, okay? This is the ground that somebody's gonna be walking on and it's in a dank, dark dungeon. It's all made out of stone. So there's gonna be big stone pavers. Yeah, like things that you would walk on that are made out of stone. To make it, to make it like everything, everything right from my perspective, to make it like three dimensional. All of the lines that I draw are gonna disappear to this one point. That's what one point perspective means. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're making a sidewalk. I'm gonna use a ruler here a couple of times and then the rest of it, I'm gonna go freehand, which means no ruler. So I'm gonna make a line that connects from here, my vanishing point, and it's gonna go right off of my page. Okay, I'm gonna do another one, maybe like here. Okay, now I'm gonna start freehand and I'm gonna make another one here. I'm gonna make another one here. I'm gonna make another one maybe over there. Okay. This is going to be the little walkway that somebody's going to be walking on in a hallway. And when I make all of the lines disappear to the same place in my one point perspective, it makes it look just absolutely three dimensional. It's like, oh yeah, of course there'd be somebody walking on that. They'd probably be walking like right in this general area. I'm just going to make like a, a general shadow area where my my character is going to be walking, okay? Probably right around there. My sound has gone alien. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to uh, make some changes here, folks. Making some changes. Built-in microphone. I'm using my built-in microphone. What? Hey, is this working? Can you guys hear me now? Is this clear and beautiful? Is that beautiful and clear? Is this working for everybody? If I get right up on my radio mic. All right. Holy mackerel. Y'all, y'all don't even know the half of it. Okay. This line right here is the line that goes between our little walkway, our hallway. And then this is going to be the wall. Okay, this is the wall of the dungeon, dungeon wall, dungeon wall. We haven't had a really good name for a song by Dragon Skull in a while, but this, that's a great song by Dragon Skull. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to come in from the extreme edge of my frame, extreme, extreme edge of the frame, and I'm going to make an archway right here. Okay, here's an archway. So somebody's gonna be walking. This is a hallway that goes left to right. And then this is an archway. Dun, dun, dun. Exactly, okay. Now it's an archway in an old stone dungeon. Maybe this is like an ancient abandoned castle that a dragon has taken up residence and some foolish adventurer thinks that they can go get all the treasure and slay the dragon. Boy, are they wrong. Maybe it's just a person having a treasure. So what we're gonna do to make this look like a stone archway, okay, is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make another layer, like kind of like you're drawing a rainbow, okay? Just another layer around the archway. This is gonna be the frame and then watch this. I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna draw little pieces of stone. These are little stone pieces. And every stone along this side of my arch is going to be curved. And then as I start to go around the arch, you can make them a little bit wedge shaped as they get towards the top, okay? But this was how, when people were making, old castles that they knew dragons were going to show up in. This was how they did the arches around them, okay? It's an archway. 
Da, 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 oh, let's make. I'm gonna make a big, big, big old stone here at the bottom. Kind of, kind of goof that up a little bit. There we go. Extra big stone at the bottom there. They they don't have to be regular. It looks better if they're like kind of rumbly tumbly, and they have jagged. Amy Eden Jollymore, we are drawing a dragon lurking in the shadows, but we've started with a single point perspective scene of an ancient dungeon. Okay. So remember that still everything disappears to this one spot. Okay, now, if you guys walked underneath a piece of paper, this would be the thickness of it, one pencil line. But if you walked underneath a giant stone archway into a dark tunnel leading into the ruins of a spooky castle, it would be thick. It would be as thick as these stones, right? It would be as thick as the stone walls. We need to show how thick this is. And here's how we're going to do it. You still have your vanishing point. If you want to get a ruler, you can. Okay. And here's the corner. This is where the sidewalk or the hallway ends. This is where this side tunnel begins. And from where we're standing, from where we're viewing our picture, this corner attaches to that vanishing point, okay? I would be doing this freehand if I was just sketching, but if you're doing a finished drawing, it's always a good idea to use a ruler. If it's your first time doing perspective, sometimes it's nice to use a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you guys, just get any old thing. Maybe you got your phone lying around. That's got a straight line on it. Don't ever say, I can't do that. I don't have a ruler. All you need is a straight edge, any old straight edge. You got a book hanging around? Grab a book. Use your book as a straight edge, anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that line. Here's that line very faintly. How thick, how thick is this wall? Maybe it's about that thick. And I, all I'm doing is I'm darkening in that planning line that I did for my perspective here, okay? Now I'm going to go straight up because this is the archway. See how I'm going to follow the line of the archway? I'm following the line of the archway until it's going to disappear. It's going to disappear behind this line. I'm not going to be able to see it behind there. Okay. That's the thickness of my archway. And now to make it look like these stones are truly the frame of my arch, watch what I'm going to do. Every single one of these corners here, every single corner of stone where they meet, see all these little spots that I'm putting little dots? Every single one of them has to meet right here, okay? So again, if I just have a phone handy, then I'd take my phone and I'd go, oh, here's one of those points. There's the other point. Here's a point to a vanishing point. Everything goes to the same vanishing point, okay? So that's what I would do, but because I'm all, I also like to do it freehand. Notice how the angle changes above the horizon line. You guys see that? Really, really, really important. So there's an archway disappearing back into the dark depths of a castle. Holy macaroni. And then to make it look like it's actually still made out of stone, we'll do the same thing that we did here where these are rough hewn stones. So we're going to, I just trace over them with like kind of jagged edges so that it looks like cool ancient ruins stones. Okay. We don't have to get super caught up in details right now, but if you wanted to, you could be like, Maybe this one's got like a little chip in it right there. Okay. As you start to put in these little details on it, it'll start to make it look way even more like an old ruined archway. Okay. But remember, this is not just an archway to nowhere. This is an archway that leads. 
Okay. It leads back. So I'm going to, that line that I drew from the very corner here is going to go all the way back. This, maybe up here, maybe there's another line that would come up here. Oh, I mean like this, like that. Yes. Okay. You don't really have to worry about that. You'll see why in a minute. Okay. I'm going to, this whole part of the castle here, of the ancient ruined castle, this wall, all of these planning lines, we are done with our planning lines at this point. Once you've got this line in there, we are done with our planning lines. Okay. So we need to do an erasing montage. Are you guys ready for an erasing montage? Oh, ooh, ooh, before we do that, check this out. Let's do just like we drew, this was like a stone hallway to make it look rougher and more like big stone pieces. The same treatment that we put onto our archway. Let's do that here. Okay. So I'm going to draw like big gaps sometimes between the stones where the stones have warped and cracked and chipped over the years. Okay. And all that I'm doing is I'm just using a, a wobbly hand and going over those really nice planning lines that I, that I made at the beginning to make it look extra like cool and gnarled up. Sometimes you can carve out little pieces, right? Like for some reason, the, this piece is like starting to, to get cracked. Maybe there's like a big crack here that goes all, almost all the way across. Okay. But as you just make a few little indications that, hey, wait a minute. Sometimes you just need to like make like little scuff marks. Okay. Now the, the, the foreground is made out of stone also. And maybe, watch this. Let's make it look like we have big pieces of stone going back into our hallway, okay? So we're gonna make them look getting closer and closer together. That's the other thing is that as you get closer to your vanishing line or your vanishing point, things start to look closer and closer together. So these big stone, so maybe I got like some like big stones here. So what I did is I just made a bunch of horizontal lines that got closer and closer together as I went out. And then I drew two more. Hey. Hey. Hey, someone's calling me. Turn your phone off, Geo. I made two lines, two more vanishing point lines, just coming out to the hallway so that I could make, check this out. Now I can make, make it look like there's some very interesting stonework happening back here on the floor. Okay, so it's just disappearing back there. And this, this is all the wall going all the way back. I wanted to do steps instead. And Stella's got cool steps. I like the steps idea. Okay, all of my planning is now done. There's going to be more erasing to do later, but first I want to erase, um, I want to erase the majority of my plans. I'm going to leave my vanishing point there just in case I need it, okay? But for now, but for now, I'm erasing. Do you want to erase? Do you want to erase? Do you want to erase in your face? Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so check it out. I'm going to erase the horizon, the horizon line over here, getting erased. This little planning line up here. Some of my frame lines, I'm erasing some of those. I'm getting serious about this drawing now. Some of these disappearing lines, disappearing. <laughs> Not using those in there. I don't need my horizon line across here. It's just distracting. trying to erase around my vanishing point and then I'm going to redraw. So I've got a large stone there. There's my vanishing point. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to erase. I, I'm planning out where I'm going to put a, a little character over here. So I'm going to erase most of this. And I can redraw that later because I'm going to have somebody right here. And that's about it. Now I'm going to fade out jams. Oh, yeah. Coming back. Okay, guys. Here we go. This is where we're going to have a dragon lurking in the shadows, by the way. Okay. Now, this is going to be a really, really dark set of ruins. And the way that we're going to make it look extremely dark is we're going to put, you know, let's say if this was like an actual hallway, maybe somebody would stand this tall to the door. Okay. So I'm going to come down about halfway up the archway. Okay. And I'm going to draw a circle. And this foolish person, this is the, this is the head of my adventurer. Okay. This foolish person is looking. Okay. So I, I draw my little oval for the head and then I draw the little cross for where I want the person to be looking. And I, I, they're looking like up here. They're like, what was that sound? So they're looking way up here, even though there's a dragon lurking in the shadows. Oh, pay attention, foolish adventurer. That's not that foolish. It's just an adventure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to draw the torso. We're looking at this person from the side, and here's the vanishing point. So everything above the horizon we're looking up at everything below the horizon we're looking down at. So here are the shoulders. We're looking down slightly at the shoulders. Here's, here's the side, that's their side. Here's the other side of them. And then let's, let's make their waist, look at this, T make their waist so that their waist also is pointing towards the horizon. That's how we're gonna view that waistline like it's a little rectangle, like it's a box, okay? And that's gonna come down to the hips. So here are the hips. And the hips are gonna follow basically the same thing as the angle of the horizon. Down here where the feet are gonna be on the pavement, that's all gonna, it's all gonna disappear to the same spot, okay? So how about this person has got one hand up here? There's a hand, there's a thumb. Here's a shoulder. Stick coming out to an elbow, elbow going up to a wrist. The wrist is hidden behind the fist. And in this fist, as any good dungeon crawler knows, it could absolutely be Sir Chauncey. Should it be Sir Chauncey? Hey, Ramona has a good idea. This could be Sir Chauncey if you guys want it to be Sir Chauncey. If it's Sir Chauncey, I would, I would probably change the pose just a little bit because Sir Chauncey is just ridiculous. Right now, I have it as a fairly timid adventurer. Ramona, if you're going to make yours Chauncey, I think that's great. Make it look like Chauncey, just as usual, totally unaware of everything. Mine is an, uh, kind of a worried adventurer. So I'm not going to make mine Sir Chauncey. But I really like that idea. Okay, so here's the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bunch of oil soaked rags at the top of this stick and a torch. So we have some torch light. Okay, this is really important for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's important because torches are awesome. See if I can get it out of the immediate glare. Okay, so here's our torch light. The other reason why it's super important because the torch shows us where the light is in this deep, dark dungeon. There's only one source of light in this dungeon. There's no sunshine down here. So if there's only one source of light, it's going to be this torch. I just wanted to give this person a little bit of a bend from here, from the, from the chest down to the hips, from where they're... Um... Okay, here's a foot. 
the tip of the foot. Okay, disappearing towards the horizon. Waistline disappearing towards the horizon. Other hand is going to have a weapon in it. Probably a sword. Maybe just like a little sword like this. And I just had another arm. Here's an elbow coming out. Here's another hand. And here's the foot on the other side. Well, actually, let's see. I think I want... I got my pose wrong, you guys. I got to erase this a little bit. When people are walking, if the back arm is in front, if this arm is in front, then it, it corresponds to this leg would be in front. So I want this leg then to be in front. Forward, give it a knee, give it a calf, give it an ankle, give it a foot, okay? And then the back leg, the knee is gonna be up here and the foot is gonna be back here. I'm gonna fill in this character. The knight is gonna be looking at the torch. If the knight is looking too much at the torch, which really wouldn't make sense, you're right. But maybe, how about this? Let's let's have our, our adventurer character here looking maybe like back over their shoulder, like they like, what was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was that sound? And now look, you guys, we've got a torch. So we know exactly where the light's coming from. It's coming from right above. It would be really dramatic shadows. Because if you want to have a dragon lurking in the shadows, you need to create dramatic shadows. So here we have some dramatic shadows. This is where the light's coming from. Why is the fire so big? You can make it smaller. <laughs> make it smaller, y'all. If the light's coming from here and it's gonna get cut off by this archway, okay? Then check this out. It would, it would be able to come in at a slight angle. All of this back here is gonna be so dark, like pitch black dark, okay? And all of this is gonna be maybe like, so the light would maybe get to the inside of this and it might get to here, but then all of this back here is gonna be dark. These are the shadows in which our dragon will lurk. And I, I encourage you guys, I encourage you, I encourage you, try this little experiment with me, okay? Go ahead and start by shading all this. Don't go your darkest. We're just gonna put some shadow in here to make sure that you know that this is, these are the shadows and we're gonna put a dragon back here. I Stella put like more than one person over here. I, that was my original idea. I wanted to have like a, a whole like Dungeons and Dragons adventuring crew going down this dungeon, like a, a wizard and a warrior. And I was thinking of all of all of all of those things. But just one, just one for now. Okay. All right. Now, back here is going to be a huge dragon. But I think it would be cool if like its claw, its front foot was scooping out in front of our shadows. So I wanna, <laughs> you guys, if you're with me this far, great. And if you wanna take it wherever you wanna take it, also great. I am getting, uh, I'm just getting silly with it now because it's so fun. So again, I still have my vanishing point. And so I'm drawing some vanishing lines so that I draw this foot so it looks like it's sitting on the pavement, okay? This was the front of the foot and I'm gonna draw some claws coming out of it. Okay. And here's the rest of the foot and then maybe, I'm gonna just make some planning lines for a leg that's gonna come up and then 
a huge head a huge head lurking in the shadows okay with big horns curling back The most important part here, and all of this can be in shadows. You can put some little sketch lines in there, but the most important part is going to be the eyes. And I'll show you what we're going to do with those, OK? Put some nostrils in there. See how part of my dragon's head is cut off? Because the hallway is going back this way. So you're not going to be able to see around this corner. I'm going to show you guys on, um, I'm going to put, these are my, I'm going to do this whole dragon head on the other side of the, uh, the page so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Cause I, I'm realizing that, go for it. that it's really not coming through so well, but you get the idea that there's something lurking in that shadow. Right. And the one thing that I do want to show you that I want to do, Hopefully you guys have a small eraser in your collection somewhere. If you don't, if you only have like a big chunky eraser, that's fine too. The one thing that we're gonna erase and that we want to be white are those triangle eyes over here, okay? I want them to look really mean too. Okay, really quickly, pretend that this is the archway. I drew a dragon's head and I started kind of with a, an oval for the shape of my dragon's head. And then I basically made a little piece of pizza. There's a little piece of pizza attached to an oval. Because this dragon is more or less looking right at us. Okay. Right here was where I made the eyes, the triangle eyes. Right on here is where I had put the nostrils coming down to a point. And then I had put a bunch of those little cheek spikes coming off to the side. And then up here is where the horn would be. And I had mine were like a little bit curled. I had put some curled horns and that's out, in, out. So it starts out, out, in, out on the other side too. If I was to actually draw this dragon, it would probably have a snout that would come forward like that. I might even put some little extra horns on there. And I think some horns down the middle Okay, and the whole body would be like going off behind the tunnel. But I did have one leg coming out. And it kind of came down like this to a point. This would be like the dragon's ankle. And then I had drawn my vanishing point lines. To the end of that foot so that I knew that it would be in perspective on the ground. So it wouldn't look like it was, it was going in some opposite direction. Okay. And then at the tip, I had three little holes and those claws came out. Okay. And that's how, that's all that I had done. And really the, the archway had cut off my dragon right about there. That was all that I had, but it's all going to be in the shadows. So that's basically just what I'm imagining. Okay, that's what I'm imagining. And then I'm gonna use my eraser to go where those nostrils are. That's where the nose is. That's where those little spikes are coming out of the side. Here's the horn. There's the spikes going down the middle. There's maybe the other horn back there. There's the top of the foot coming out and here's some claws.
Okay. Now, before I do anything else, I this is not completed by any means. And I don't know where you guys are at with that, how that's going for you. I hope it's going well, but things are things are getting wading into the deep end pretty quick here. Nice. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, but before before I go to my black colored pencil, which is the next thing that I was gonna do, you know what I would like to do? Stella already beat me to the punch. And when I looked over at her drawing, I was like, oh, of course. To make it, to complete the illusion that we're in a, a underground castle, really lightly, start to plan out where the great big stones would be that would make up your castle wall, like these actual walls back here, okay? Sometimes there'd be like little stones, sometimes there'd be big ones, and they'd interlock to make it look like you have these giant stone walls. We'll put, put a little guy up in here, maybe a little one in there. There, and of course, across the top here, we're gonna have them up here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. There we go. Now, now we've fleshed out. We've put a, a background behind our our adventurer person. And over here, if you want, you can keep them going back into the the dark depths. Just remember that they would get smaller and closer together as you go back in your tunnel. Okay. And it's really fun. Because remember, you got a bright light coming from one direction only. All of these little crevices between your stones would be very dark, especially the side that's on the opposite, the opposite side from this torch would be the darkest. Down here, super dark. Down here. I know, Stella's saying, why Why aren't you watching where you're going, silly adventurer? My adventurer is just too nervous. Like, what was that behind me? What's going on in front of me? Just not, not really, not really, didn't really pay attention in adventuring school. Thought it was all a big, big joke, a big game. Okay. My adventurers are two kids. Now, I sharpened my black colored pencil. And here's what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to dip it into my glass. Just kidding. I just got this glass of water because I wanted to sip it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. You know what? Get ready for some big time coloring. This is all going to be shadowed. I'm just going to take my black colored pencil. Buckle your seatbelts. I'm going to go over everything back here in these dark, dark shadows, especially on the other side of this archway. I'm going over the dragon, but it's okay because I already erased the parts that I thought would be good to erase. And I have my pencil lines in there where I want my pencil lines. So I'm just gonna go over it, except for the eyes. The eyes are gonna stay bright, bright, bright. And I'm gonna make all of this Really, really, really dark. But watch this. You guys see how I'm leaving that horn? I'm leaving all of the super dark parts, but I didn't go over that dragon horn with my super, super dark. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna outline the dragon's face and here's it here's that leg that's coming forward and there's the back foot i'm not going to color that in super super dark what if you were like okay let's draw a dragon and then color over it all black yeah like that was like the other answer would be like dragon lurking in the shadows just color color your whole page in all black and then be like haha fooled you it's like okay here's for the dragon okay 
Try this really complicated dragon. And, 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 and now that we've got this, maybe I want it to be even more in the shadows. So maybe now that I've got such dark stuff all around it, I can make I can make that foot even darker. I can do all of this side of the dragon even darker. What made this dragon so mad is that for years and years, this dragon has been happily living in this old abandoned castle. I'm I'm shading in here. I'm trying to think of like maybe like little hints of of light would be glinting off of parts of this dragon, but not all of it. Okay. There's those little spikes that are going back. Here's the other where the other nostril would be. I would be dark, dark shadows on this side of that other nostril. And on this one. And then dark, dark shadows under here until that leg starts to get out to where maybe we could we could start to see it. Okay, and then I'm gonna keep that black pencil and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna color everything in here faintly. I'm gonna go on the underside of this archway. I'm gonna make those little spots where the, between the stones will be black, but I'm not gonna start lightening that up until I get all the way down here. Here's where. That's where the real highlights come Here's where the, the actual torch light would finally be hitting it. Right in over here, okay? And then I'm just using this black pencil only to come in and, and add all these shadows to where all my planning lines were. The, uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do, you could do this all the way around, but I think that the next thing that I wanna do to just keep adding the atmosphere, the torch is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all these shadows and I'm gonna fade them out as I get towards that torch light. But then as I get further back here, getting darker. It's actually pretty dark back here. But you're still gonna be able to see super dark, those cracks that we made. Yeah, between all of those ancient old stones. You're still gonna be able to see those, except for where a giant dragon claw is over them. That's a little shadow that's behind the claw because it's getting shadowed by that torch light that's coming through. That's why I did that extra dark puddle over there. Okay, so everything over here and up in this corner will be another dark patch. So I'm gonna bring more of my shading out this way. These are gonna be standing out a little bit from the wall. So there's gonna be a little shadow, deep dark shadow behind those. And then of course, all the crickles and crackles between the stones on the wall are gonna be extra dark. Mm hmm, I say. Okay, so that's nice and that's nice and dark over there from our torchlight. We can do the same thing up here where this corner will start dramatically dark up here and we'll fade it out as we get closer to the torchlight. If you don't put these darks in, your torch won't look like it's doing anything. It'll just be like, oh yeah, he's holding a, a stick with stuff on it. But if you make these dark shadows everywhere around your torch, 
it will create that illusion that there's light coming from this one spot. That's the other thing that this dark black colored pencil can do is it can make um, these dramatic lighting effects, which is another thing. That's strange. Hmm. The, the dark pencil makes light. Exactly. That's, that's the thing is that you need you without, hey, Am I quoting Bob Ross? Bob Ross, am I quoting you? You gotta leave your darks because without darks, you have no light, Geo. I've said it a million times on my show. Whoa. Wow. What's up with the dragon? Why is it lurking? Oh yeah, well, it's this was its home. It lived in this these ruins forever. And then all of a sudden, rumors started to go around. Hey, we heard there's a dragon in these ruins. And then one after the other, ridiculous adventures with sharp, pointy swords and bright, annoying torches start tromping on through its wonderful, abandoned, Not abandoned castle, looking for treasure and trying to kill anything that they see. And this dragon is just so tired of it. It's like, why can't we go back to the good old days when I had peace and quiet? Nope, no such luck. All right, so I will put some nice dark, deep shadows in where there's these uh, rocks up here. And we'll put some nice dark, deep shadows in here where there's still those creases in the pavers, the big stones. Put a nice big crease in there where show that there's still stone wall back here. Okay. And then we've got this character. We've got 10 minutes to turn this into some kind of character. Maybe. I know I've got my character looking over the shoulder right now, but maybe Stella's right. Maybe. Do you think it, like if the, if the head is looking this way, this is the moment when the adventurer sees the dragon lurking in the shadows. That would be a, that'd be a powerful moment. It could be looking right at us. Like, huh, I wonder what's going on over there. Um, I think for my story, for my personal story, I think the, the looking over the shoulder is still my best bet. So I'm, I'm still gonna have, it's a twist in the neck, okay? But here's, here's my adventurer. Not watching where they're going. Looking over the shoulder, trying to figure out what they just went past. Never do that when you're adventuring in dark dungeons, okay? I'm gonna move this over here so that I can have a little bit more flexibility and that you guys are not stuck in my glare, okay? So here's the head, there's the angle of my eyes and helmet. As soon as we put a helmet, now we've got an adventure. Absolutely. So maybe, maybe like a little, uh, a little, just little nubbin horns on this helmet. They couldn't afford like the really big sharp horned helmet. And maybe, <laughs> oh no, as soon as I do this, it just it becomes Sir Chauncey, a little curly mustache. Big bushy beard. Nose coming out. I'm just gonna draw a little line for the eyes right now. We're not gonna put a bunch of detail on this adventurer. <laughs> no reason to spend a lot of time detailing this adventure that's about to get munched up in the shadows here. All right, let's put a belt on. The belt 
disappearing to this vanishing point. Curling around because that's the side, that's the front. Maybe, maybe a little bit of armor. Maybe like a little chainmail skirt there. So this piece right here is going up over this leg. That's why I put that line there to show it's going up over the leg. But then it would be folding here because the other leg is back here. So trying to think about how the shapes of that I'm drawing affect every single thing. That's, that's really it. It's just all remembering your shapes, remembering shapes, remembering shapes. Here's a boot. There's a leg. There's a leg. There's a boot. And here is a tunic. So the tunic has open sleeves. And here's some armor to go up over his shoulder. Here's an elbow. And here's that hand. There's another piece of armor sticking out over the shoulder on this side. Not gonna help. I don't even know why you spend so much on your armor. You should really have just paid attention at adventuring class. You didn't walk right into dragons lurking in the shadows. Really? What you should have been spending your time on. So Chauncey Butchin. <laughs> oh, love it. Okay, now, in the remaining five minutes, after you've gotten some cool shadows in there, okay, take your orange and your yellow. Oranges and yellows here, okay? And the center of your torch will be white. And then come around that with yellow. And then come around that with your orange, okay? We don't need any red here. And then what you can do that's pretty fun, what you can do that's pretty fun, ah, all these edges, see this edge? Maybe there's like a little edge here, maybe there's like a little thing here. The edges that are facing the torch not very far out over here. It doesn't cast really strong light. So maybe just like a teeny bit over here. But the edges are gonna catch that torch light, that bright, bright yellow torch light, okay? Just the edges though, that's it. Maybe a little bit on these nails on the claws that are sticking out. Maybe like a couple spots here, definitely Definitely on the stones around our adventurer and definitely on the adventurer's stuff. Like on the top of the helmet, it's gonna be all yellows. Top of the gloves, arms. You could really just do this whole thing yellow. Really, because we can always add darker shadows later. So you can kind of make your, your adventurer yellow and then we'll put yellow down here on the ground around and we're gonna fade that out as it gets farther away. Okay, and maybe there, you know, there's some bright yellow up here on the walls because this is where the actual torch is. This would be really bright back here on these torch walls. Torch walls? Torch walls. Dungeon wall, torch wall. These are all great names for songs. Okay, now I'm switching to this golden color and I'm gonna fade from my yellow into an orange on this stuff. 
fading into orange. And I want to do it, you know, fairly quick out, out of that orange. I don't want there to be too much just like yellow there. The yellow should be just the bright, bright, bright spots. And then if you want, you can keep that orange going and it's going to fade into the black. And that black's going to just eat it up over here. Okay, same thing up here on the walls. You can get my orange over and around. But the separation of the color is going to do more and more and more to show, oh, that the torch is where the light's coming from. That's it. That's what's creating all this light. And then I have this one kind of brownish, brownish orange that I can do a little bit more, maybe a little bit more over here on this side. All these parts that the torch light probably wouldn't be able to get to down here. We can always come back with our black and add deeper shadows here as well. And on the torch as well. Nice. This side of our sword is gonna be a little bit darker than this side. And you know what, let's take a little bit of that orange and let's just warm up just a little bit of our dragon and some of those highlighted spots. It'd just be like a little reflection of the color that would could be bouncing up off of those stones, making our dragon glow just a little bit more as you come out into the light. Ba -ba bing bada bing bang boom there's a, an adventurer heading towards <laughs> its adventure doom you know the only thing that i really want to make this complete i gotta get this dark black in here to make some more deep shadows on my adventure i know we're at time but i'm not i must i must see this through and this shadow is important to me the one underneath these feet the one that comes out here and has a sword, holding up a sword, and then connecting to this other foot and the dark shadow that would be underneath that foot and that little helmet that would be poking out over there. That's an important shadow. I want that shadow to be there. Okay, done. I would probably still come back in with my outliner pen. I do like my outliner pen, but this is a really good place to be for a dragon lurking in the shadows. I really like it. I do want more. I need there to be like this gray that fades into the, I didn't like that. It, because I left it kind of white, I, it becomes lighter than everything around it. I don't want the stones to be lighter than everything around them. I just want to make sure that you see that they're glowing in the torchlight. Okay. All right. Eh, okay. Time to call it. Time to call it quits. That was really fun. I hope uh, crocodile dragon tomorrow. No, what are we doing tomorrow? We are doing um, tomorrow's dragon is a dragon with a friend and Maybe it could have a crocodile friend. I think that's a really good idea. And it could be a crocodile dragon with a crocodile friend. Liam, endless possibilities. Let me play my outro theme uh, music. Oh man, that was super duper fun. Oh, such a good time. Whoa, there's a dragon in that tunnel, <laughs> everybody. Heads up. Hey guys, thanks so much for drawing a dragon with me today. That was a really good time. Um, if you guys want to support Draw a Dragon, if you can support Draw a Dragon, please do. Uh, donation information is at drawdragon.org. There's Venmo and PayPal options. And yeah, we're going to do it again tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., a dragon with a friend. Thanks so much. I'll see you later.
Pshum. Pshum, 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 pshum.